first graders and kindergartners, how are you doing today? Happy Friday. Yay. <laughs> Being that we're not having a live Zoom meeting today, I thought I'd come to you in this form. Today, we're going to continue our study about beaks and how birds use their beaks to survive. So we have a couple targets we're going to go over today. The first one is I can read and review my beak notes. The second target is I can analyze a model, a paragraph, to learn about the parts of an informative paragraph. And the third one is I can write about how the bee eater uses its beak to survive. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and review about our bird notes. You can take yours out and read along with me, or if you'd like, you can just follow along as I read my notes to you. I will get a little pointer so that you can follow along with me. Here we go. The first bird is a song sparrow. There's the picture clue. The song sparrow has a short cone shaped beak. The bird uses its beak to crack seeds. The next bird we studied is the macaw. There's the picture of the macaw and it says he has a heavy sharp beak and he crushes seeds with, these be with his beak or her beak. On the next page, you'll see that we studied some more birds. The first bird we studied was the hummingbird on this page. The hummingbird, there's our picture of the hummingbird, has a long, thin beak, and it uses it to reach or to get nectar. The next bird is the eagle. That picture is courtesy of Ike. Thanks, Ike. The eagle has a hooked beak, and it uses it to rip flesh. And the last bird we studied was the woodpecker. The woodpecker has a strong beak and it uses it to pound holes. And there's our picture of our woodpecker. So that is three, four, five birds so far. We did two more. We also have a picture of the flamingo. The flamingo has an upside down beak and the flamingo uses that beak to catch and filter food. And finally, oh, I love this picture. We have the pelican. If you look closely at the pelican, you can see that the pelican has a pouch for a beak. The pelican uses its beak to eat food, some of you said, or some of you even used the word to scoop up fish. So those are our bird beak notes. And these are gonna come in really handy this week because this week you're gonna be writing a paragraph about a bird and how it uses its beak to survive, or shall I say birds? You'll pick two from all of our notes so far. I'm gonna move on to our next slide now that we have all those beaks in our mind. And we're gonna kind of shift gears back to our feather paragraph. We're gonna use this as a model paragraph. And I've color coded this paragraph to show you that we have a beginning sentence also known as a focus statement that is in green. We also have an ending sentence at the bottom that is also in green um, that wraps up the paragraph. And then we have the details in yellow and blue. So first we're gonna start with the topic sentence or the focus statement or the beginning sentence. And it tells us what the paragraph is about. So remember right now we're thinking about feathers, not beaks. It says birds feathers help them survive in many ways. So when I read that paragraph, I know that's gonna be all about birds and their feathers and how it helps them to survive. But when we wrote this a couple weeks ago, we focused on how the, the sentence, the first sentence had the word birds, had the word feathers and survive. Those will be the key words that you're gonna include when you write about your bird beaks. Instead of having feathers, you'd have the word beaks. So once again, it says birds, feathers, help them to survive in many ways. The paragraph goes on to say, our first detail, it supports or gives evidence for that focus sentence, it's in yellow. Some birds have thick feathers. These feathers protect them like sunscreen. And if you wanted to, you could give the name of the bird as well. But again, the first detail has two sentences in it. Some birds have thick feathers, 
These feathers protect them like sunscreen. If you wanted to write some birds have thick feathers and they use them to, or they, and they protect them like sunscreen, that would be fine too. So you'll have one or two sentences to support the thick feathers. Our next detail is also about feathers and how they help the birds to survive. It says, other birds have colored feathers that match their habitat. These feathers help the bird to hide. Oh, I think that's talking about the cardinal, don't you agree? So in this second detail that's in blue, it's talking about feathered, colored feathers, how they use it as camouflage, how it helps the bird to survive. And our final pair, or our final sentence is our conclusion. The conclusion wraps up the paragraph and it's stated in a slightly different way than that first sentence. So it says, feathers protect birds from the sun, the cold, and predators. So all in all, there are three parts to our paragraph. It's kind of like a hamburger. I know you guys didn't like that comparison or grilled cheese or whatever you want it to be. It has a bun on the top or a piece of bread, which is your beginning sentence. The middle is all the gooey stuff in the middle, like the meat or the cheese or the tomatoes or whatever you want. Those are the details. And the bottom is the bun that wraps the whole sandwich together. It's the conclusion. If you didn't have that bread and that bun, your fingers would be inside all that gooey stuff and it'd be yucky. So listen one more time as I read our paragraph about feathers, because tomorrow you'll be working on one about beaks. It says, birds' feathers help them to survive in many ways. Some birds have thick feathers. These feathers protect them like sunscreen. Other birds have colored feathers that match their habitat. These feathers help the bird to hide. And our final sentence is feathers protect birds from the sun, the cold, and the predators. That is a way to wrap up the whole paragraph or like we talked about in class, we could also say, looking at the beginning one, birds' feathers help them to survive in many ways. We can end it by saying there are many ways that birds use their feathers to survive. And I'm giggling because right when I wrote that, a big, huge blue jay, no, maybe not a blue jay, I'm not sure what kind of bird, flew outside my window and landed on my roof that I could see. It's like he's listening to us. So keep these parts of the paragraph in mind, beginning, middle, middle, end. This is all focused all about feathers. We're gonna be fo focusing on beaks later this week. So now this brings me to the next part of our lesson. I'm gonna go ahead and stop share for just a moment. I'm gonna share again one more time and we are gonna go ahead and look at our book about the bee eater. It says the bee eager, bee eater, that's not very focused. The bee eater can dig. I'm not even gonna show that because it's not very focused. I'm just gonna talk to you guys. It says the bee eater can dig. Let me go ahead and read to you all about the bee eater. Bee eaters, from their name, there he is. From their name, it's not hard to guess that bee eaters use their long, thin beaks to catch bees. Once it captures a bee, the bee eater whacks it against a hard surface to knock off the bee stinger and squeeze out its venom. The bird also uses its bill to dig a home. Bee eaters nests in large colonies where they dig burrows, remember they're digging with their beak, into dirt cliffs or on the ground. These burrows provide shelter and safe places to raise the bee eaters young. So I'm gonna let you look real closely. They catch bees, they whack them on a hard surface, and then they also dig burrows or dig holes where they can live and protect their young. That's how it helps them to survive. So let's go to this page one more time. And this is the page you're gonna do on your own. So the bee eater will be the bird that you'll be focusing on. How, what does the bee eater's beak look like? What does it do? If I look closely at it, oh boy. From their name, it's not hard to guess that they have long, thin beaks. So I got that evidence right from the text. So we would write long, 
thin. Ooh, that sounds like the hummingbird, doesn't it? But they don't suck nectar with their beaks. They instead dig holes. So today you're gonna use this, this example to fill in your bird beak note catcher. You'll also post a picture of that. So if you wanna go ahead and put it, oh, if I go back to this page, you might have room to put it under the pelican. If you don't, you'll wanna go ahead and do it on a new page. Um, but that is your written assignment for today. You're gonna to talk about the bee eater and how the bee eater has a long, thin neck, or not neck, oh my goodness, beak, and the bee eater uses it to dig holes. I hope you enjoyed this lesson today. Even though we're not doing it live, it's similar to live. In our lesson, we reviewed the notes that we've taken so far about all our birds and all their beaks. We talked about an informative paragraph, how it has a beginning, two details, and an end. And then finally, we talked about the bee eater and how the bee eater has a long, thin beak and it uses it to dig holes. Please remember to post a picture of that in Seesaw today. Have a great weekend. See you during your one-on-one. -on -one. Bye, guys.